Welcome. I am with Dr. Roger Hickman, head of musicology at California State University, Long Beach. And we are discussing his wonderful textbook and just regular book for anyone. It's called Real Music, Exploring 100 Years of Film Music. Okay, Roger, now we are moving into what I consider a golden era mm -hmm. of film music. And we're talking about eh, the 30s and the 40s, uh, and perhaps you'll correct my perception of what exactly the, the era of the classical Hollywood score is, film score. Wh where would you put that time-wise? For me, it begins with King Kong, 1933. That's the first time music, in the sound era, music was complicated, so there wasn't a lot of music at that time. King Kong came out and they made this horror film, and they previewed it, and audiences were laughing because <laughs> you know, they, were not, they were not being terrified. So they hired Max Steiner and said, literally to him, save our picture. And they gave him $10,000, and he wrote just nonstop music, and about after a third of the way through the film, just dominates. It's loud, it's scary, and it worked. The audience was shrieking out and yelling, and sometimes the audiences left because they were too scared, so they had to tone it down a bit. So that's the beginning that music had a role um, in film in the sound era. So by 35, 1935, we started getting some really good scores. And by 37, 38, those, those are the classic years into the early 40s. Why did they go to Max Steiner? What was his background? Uh, he was a theater person. He conducted in New York. Uh, he came out to Hollywood. He was doing some light scoring, which had been done very successful at that point. So uh, he was the, the man they turned to. What is what are the qualities of the film scores of that era? Well, the standardized. Uh, we, if we close our eyes and say this is what the Hollywood classical score sounds like, first thing we say it's wall-to-wall -wall music, which is the way we have saying there's just a lot of music in the score. Uh, doesn't mean there's always music, but there's predominant music. Uh, second of all, we think of an orchestra playing. Uh, third, the style is what we call romantic style. It's a hangover from the 19th century. Um, it's got some advantages. It's got pretty melodies. It's got colorful orchestrations. It got, has beats that you can hang on to and tap your toes to. And mostly it has a, the widest range of emotions. So you can have humor. You can have terror. And it, it can change on a, on a dime. So that's what's so useful about the style. It can just reflect all these emotions and change constantly. Uh, very good. And uh, plus, it can use they use something we call light motifs. Yes. And just in case people don't know what a light Please motif is, it. let's listen to a light motif and see if it's recognizable. Okay. Well, I know the answer to that one. That theme from Jaws, well, it's not really a theme, it's a leitmotif, that's uh -huh. what we're speaking yeah. of. That's almost in the vernacular. I mean, it's almost become Jello and Kleenex, and <laughs> it is the scary uh -huh. yes. leitmotif. So define a leitmotif. Well, if, if you were at a beach and you heard that music and thought to myself, I'm not going to go in the water, <laughs> I get out of the then water. you don't have to know what a leitmotif is. You know what a leitmotif is. It's a, it's a, a theme that represents something in the drama. In this case, it represents the shark. Uh, so some light motifs are very obvious. People all know the Darth Vader theme, mm -hmm. and they know you can close your eyes, you know when he's there because his theme is being played. Uh, s some light motifs are not quite so obvious. Let's say Star Wars, Luke Skywalker's that opening theme of, of Star Wars. Dum dum bum 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 bum. That's actually Luke Skywalker's theme. Once the movie starts, that follows Luke Skywalker. And the thing with these light motifs, one is they tell you something about the character. So, uh, for example, Jaws. It's low register, usually means bad guy. Yes. And it's obsessive. Da bum, 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 bum. That means there's no escape of this guy. Once he comes after you, he's obsessive. He won't stop. He's going to keep coming at you. So you don't really have a chance. All that's in that motive. Darth Vader's motive is also in the dark register. Dom, 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 dom. That's a very menacing and uh, evil sounding. Luke Skywalker, uh, very hero heroic, at least initially. But what will happen in these movies is uh, when things happen to the characters, they'll alternate some of the leitmotifs to show you their condition, what's happening to them. 
So with Luke Skywalker, if he's suddenly sad and lonely, instead of the horns playing, you hear a clarinet, da, da, do, da, 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 very slowly, he's sad. And if he's in danger, you'll hear it distorted, da, da, dee, da, 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 dee, da, and say, oh, he's in trouble. Uh, so they will show you what happens to the character. Will you please uh, translate from the German what light motif is? It means leading motive, and it comes from Wagner, the studies of Wagner. Okay. Many people think Wagner invented this term. He didn't, but it was applied to Wagner. And uh, many composers were proud to take this technique that they've known from Wagner and into their own film scores. So you can have a theme that represents part of the drama. So they heard it, and then they put a name to it. Yeah, so uh, well they just borrowed the name from Wagner because... Wagner is sort of a god figure in music, and so they were proud to use that term from German. And it's it's become an acceptable term now. It's even in spell check. <laughs> oh <laughs> so my goodness. So that means it must be uh, accepted universally. I'm not positive I understand the difference between leitmotif and theme. Um, let's say a, a, a leitmotif is going to have to have a clear association something with something, and it should be consistent. And I said, just to finish up with the Darth Vader theme, one of my favorite transformations in all of film happens in, in The Return of the Jedi when Darth Vader's dying. And you see at the very end, he's going to take his mask off, and suddenly you hear this theme that's been the trombones and menacing. It's played by harp. Bum, bum, bum. And it slow suggests that he's dying. And of course, the harp is a crochet for heaven. And, so, and it's beautiful. It sounds like a beautiful theme that's been played, and he dies peacefully. Um, there's a let's say take a theme as a movie theme is Magnificent Seven. What a great theme that is, Elmer Bernstein. Um, right. But it doesn't match anything in the story. It's just sometimes in the writing they'll play it. It could pop up any time. So that's a movie theme, but it has no clear association with somebody or some object or some emotion within the story. So it's not consistently attached to one person or thing. So that's the difference between a general theme and a light motif, which has. A very specific uh, association. We probably should mention that John Williams did do the scores both for Jaws and yeah. for mm -hmm. uh, the Star Wars. And anytime you hear brass playing, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's right. probably probably John Williams. Well, we, we might get to John Williams some more a little bit later because we will. Uh, he is he would I consider a neoclassic composer in terms of film history because we had the classic age. We went away from the classic age, and then with Star Wars, it came back again. The classical Hollywood score. And so that's where leitmotifs came back and did oh. a, you know, and we he was a master at that.